Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving a polynomial system. A really good one. This problem is kind of has been inspired by an Olympiad problem that I made a video on a long time ago. I don't know how many years ago. I'll try to find out and share that link with you if I can find it. It's been a while. So anyways, we have this polynomial system x plus y plus z is equal to 4 and we also have 2xy minus z squared is equal to 16. And then we're going to solve this system for x, y, and z. I'm also going to show you a graph at the end which kind of explains what is going on with these three variables. Unfortunately with Desmos, as far as I know, it's not quite possible to make 3D graphs. I don't know if with GeoGebra you can do it, but with Desmos it's very limited. So that's why I had to set a value for z uh, and use it as a parameter. And you can kind of um, pretend that this is a 3D solution. Anyways, so we have this interesting equation. And what is also interesting about this system is that there are three variables, but only two equations. So that kind of reminds me, is this a Diophantine equation? Is this a number theory problem where you solve for integers? But that's not necessarily the case. So we don't, we're not given any requirement of integer solutions. We're just going to solve this for real numbers. Make sense? Are there any complex solutions? I do not know. There probably is some. And you'll let me know. So let's see how we can approach this problem. I think I, I got a um, method that I'll be presenting and then we can kind of discuss alternatives. I'm not exactly sure if they're going to work nicely, but um, I'll just still share with you. So let's start with the solution. What am I going to do? I'm going to go ahead and isolate z from the first equation. I want to do that because, and I want to do it like this, so I want to keep the x plus y as an entity. And then I want to square both sides of this because I have a z squared that I can replace with. Uh, when I square both sides, I'll get z squared, and then I'll plug it in, and I want to end up with that with two variables because both of my equations have three variables and I don't like that. I'd like to uh, have two variables. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and square both sides. Z squared equals, now we're going to treat this as like an A minus B, which is a little easier than A minus B minus C squared. Pretty much the same thing, but I find it a little easier. A squared and then minus 8 or 2AB and then plus B squared. Awesome. Now, what are we going to do with this, right? We replace z with that, and obviously we want to plug this in here. Well, let's go ahead and simplify it for uh, first a little bit, like 16 minus 8x minus 8y plus x squared plus y squared plus 2xy. So this whole thing is equal to z squared. Let's go ahead and plug it in here. Let's rewrite that equation, 2xy minus z squared is equal to 16. And then, what are we going to do with this? Replace z squared with this gigantic expression. So it's going to look like this. 2xy, 2xy plus 16 minus 8x minus 8y plus x squared plus y squared plus 2xy equals 16. Awesome. Now, the 16 doesn't cancel out because this one is going to be negative, but let's go ahead and expand it. 2xy minus 16 plus 8x plus 8y minus x squared minus y squared minus 2xy equals 16. The only thing that cancels out is x minus, I mean, not x minus, 2xy. 2xy is the only thing that cancels out. And notice that x squared and y squared are negative on the left-hand side. So let's put everything on the right-hand side. So like this. x squared plus y squared minus 8x minus 8y plus 16 plus 16. That's going to make plus 32. But I'd like to keep it as 16 plus 16. I'll tell you why in a little bit. And the whole thing is equal to 0. So far, so good. Now, here's my goal. To be able to solve the system for real solutions, I got one equation and two variables. And they're not necessarily integers. So I have to use a special sum. And we're going to get that by completing the square. So we're going to do what we're going to do now is called completing the square. 
So it, lo it looks like this. x squared minus 8x plus 16 is a perfect square. And then the rest is y squared minus 8y plus 16. That's also a perfect square. So I kind of have the sum of two squares. Obviously, difference of two squares can be factored. Sum of two squares cannot be, but they give us a good result because we can conclude something about this. Okay? I know that's a 4. I'm just going to change it. And now we're going to have a good thing. Okay, here we go. Now, do you see how this works? Obviously, we separated them and write both as perfect squares. And that's perfect. Now, here's what happens. I have the sum of two squares being equal to 0. If x and y are real numbers, both x minus 4 and y minus 4 must be 0 because if x minus 4 does not equal 0, and then that's going to be either positive or negative, but its square is going to be positive. So this is going to be a positive quantity, but a positive quantity plus a negative quantity can only be 0, but y minus 4 squared cannot be negative for real values of y. So both of these have to be 0. So in other words, we get x minus 4 equals 0 and y minus 4 equals 0, from which we get x equals 4 and y equals 4. Make sense? So 4 comma 4 is going to be a solution, but guess what? We have three variables, so we have to solve for z as well. But how do you solve for z? The easiest way to do it, their sum is 4. Great, let's use it. x plus y plus z is equal to 4, but we know that x is 4 and y is 4, so z must be negative 4. Make sense? So from here we get z equals negative 4, and they are in not interchangeable, so we can't really switch them around. So the only ordered pair is going to be 4, 4, negative 4. Make sense? That's going to be my solution set. All right, let's go ahead and look at some alternatives here. Could I solve this problem differently, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at it. x plus y plus z is equal to 4, and then 2xy minus z squared is equal to 16. I could possibly do the following. I could go ahead and square both sides in the first equation because that's also going to give me 16 and then maybe set these equal to each other. Let's see if that works. x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus 2xy plus 2xz plus 2yz equals 16 which is equal to 2xy minus z squared. Awesome. 2xy cancels out and then we put the z squared on the left hand side we get 2z squared plus 2xz plus 2yz. Now this equation is equal to 0, but can I do something about this? Well, all these three terms, because I got rid of the 2xy, now I got something a little nicer. I'm thinking, can I take out a 2z or not 2z? Yes, I can. And that gives me z plus x plus y. And guess what? I know z plus x plus y is equal to 4. So I can replace it with 4. Let's do it. And that gives us x squared plus y squared plus 8z is equal to 0. Hmm. Interesting, right? Well, here's the thing. Can x squared plus y squared be equal to negative 8z, right? Well, here's the thing. It can as long as z is negative. So this kind of tells us that z must be negative and x squared plus y squared is just a sum of uh, two squares. Well, is that going to help me at all? I don't think this is getting anywhere. So that's kind of like uh, doesn't really give me anything. But anyways, there must be another way to do it. Whatever I did did not work. And hopefully you can guide me in the right direction. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.